best is yet to come and babe won't it be fine you think you've seen the sun but you ain't seen it shine Hello everyone and welcome once again to Ask the Trek Experts, the show where we answer your questions about Star Trek. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Sarah. Sarah, today's question comes from Brian Maggot on the website, wearegeeksnotnerds.com, who asks us uh, to do the age-old Kirk versus Picard argument. Uh, do we prefer Kirk over Picard? Who is the better captain? Etc. Etc. Uh, and I also kind of wanted to take this opportunity to also just kind of launch into a discussion about the captains on the whole, mm -hmm. and to talk about uh, why Kirk and Picard are um, still considered such iconic characters compared to the other three captains. Sure. So, uh, Sarah, Kirk yes. versus Picard, go. Oh, that's an easy one. Yeah. Stalemate. <laughs> <laughs> Stalemate. Yeah, I have no idea. Really? Yeah. All right. I have it's something I've thought long and hard about. Now, you do realize that we Trekkies are supposed to have an answer for this, right? I you know. You do realize I'm... that most, most lay people just expect us, uh, a big, you know, self-proclaimed Star Trek aficionados, to, to, to be able to immediately save Kirk or Picard. I'm bucking the trend. <laughs> All right, cool. No, no, no it's fine. I, I, I appreciate uh, turning stereotypes on their heads. I, however, uh, cannot, for I have an answer. Mine has always been Picard. Always. Always Picard over Kirk. Uh, part of that is because um, I grew up with Picard mm -hmm. more than I grew up with Kirk. Uh, like, I was watching Next Gen a lot. Like, I actually, I think I saw uh, an episode or two of TOS before I ever saw TNG when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I mean, my Trek history goes way, way back to, like, when I was four, five, six. Oh, mine goes all like the way back to when I was, what, 22? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, no, you were, you were, no, what, 19? 19, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Uh, you were just out of high school when you met me, and that's, yeah. when, we, that's when we started with the whole... With um, direct thing, but um, yeah. So uh, I think the deal is I, I maybe had seen a little bit of, of original series and in, in, in a movie or two, but like my my uh, my, my hard recollection of when I was really into Star Trek was Picard, and Picard for me was just a guy to look up to. The the problem is that I could with with Kirk for me was that I could relate to Picard before I could relate to Kirk because sure. Picard was a thinker and Kirk was a fighter. Yes. Kirk was also a thinker, but. He also it was a different kind of thing. Yeah, it was he, he was a stra he was a strategist, mm -hmm. uh, whereas whereas Picard was was a was a diplomat. You know, he yes. could talk himself out of situation, and so could Kirk, but again, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a bit of a different way. Yes, yeah, certainly. And and for me, the problem is that there's just so much to admire about each captain. Yeah, in, right. In their own way, mm -hmm. and there it's just so neck and neck that. For this situation, it's Kirk, but for this situation, it's Picard. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that's not to say I don't love Kirk. Yeah. Well, what's not to love about Kirk? I mean, uh, but, but, but Picard, uh, I think it's also an actor thing. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick Stewart is and always will be my favorite actor of all time. Sure. He's and, really brilliant. Yeah, he's, he, he's just brilliant. I always wanted to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I also was always um, somewhat partial to uh, British people, mm -hmm. British actors. And, oh, and, and, and anybody who's classically trained. And really. British comedy. And, and, um, and, and, and Patrick Stewart, as serious of an actor as, 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 as he is, is also mm -hmm. very funny. Sure. So, um, so, so all of that kind of, kind of rolled into one. But yeah, he was just he, he, he was a role model, man. He was, and so was Kirk. But I mean, like Picard was so much more. And this is going to sound funny considering the fact that Picard hated kids. But, but for, but for me, Picard was always more of a father figure than Kirk. Yes. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense. That does but. make sense. I always, in the movies, I, I always thought it was weird that Kirk even had a son. Mm. And so, for some reason, that plot point could never stick for me. But they did it the only way they could have. Yeah. He had to be an illegitimate son. It's of Kirk. Course. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing that makes any sense, you know. Yeah. If Kirk's going to have a son, he can't, he can't get married. That was part of the problem with Generations, really, is that Kirk wanted to settle down. I was like, really? Yeah. You're, you're Kirk. Yeah, that, yeah, Kirk can't settle down. He's Kirk. So, yeah. Um... So I don't know. So you say yeah, uh, Picard over Kirk for me, uh, but that's just a preference thing. I still I still love Kirk. Um, what what the thing the thing I would say about um, about Kirk over Picard is that Kirk was always cons more consistent than Picard, yeah. um, at least through the movies. I, I guess what I mean is. Um, Picard got switched into an action hero, and he became much more uh, of a two-dimensional figure by the stupid movies. Stupid movies. <laughs> Whereas Kirk still, um, even in the bad ones, was still Kirk. Yeah. I never well, thought in he, any movie he was he really very contrary from who he was in the original series yeah. into a slightly older, slightly more seasoned Kirk, where he had all this experience in the background, and you could totally see the progression. Yeah. And he was still Kirk through and through, mm -hmm. but. He was older, and 
he thought about things slightly differently in a different way, but not so different. Yeah, which like is just Picard. realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Picard, yeah, the the problem is that Kirk started as a young guy. Yeah. Picard didn't. Picard started as as, as an as an older person. Yeah. Um, as as a middle aged, but even a little bit older than that. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, when you first meet Picard, he's fifty. Yeah. Right. Easily. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. And so. And so I, I guess, uh, the, and what's funny is it seemed like the movies were trying to make him younger. Yeah. And then it didn't work. It didn't uh, so you didn't, you didn't have the same kind of progression with Picard. It no, was, it was it simply, was... He's, he's the character that he is in, in TNG where he thinks uh -huh. his way out of problems and he's, um, and, and he's, also, he's always very moralistic and he's always, he's always um, you know, evaluating and his convictions. He has these great speeches all the time and yeah. tries to find the moral thing to do. And in the right if situation. you only saw Picard in the movies... Uh, you may wonder uh, why so many Trekkies look up to and respect him and yeah. find him to be a role model to be looked up to. Because yeah. not that he does anything, well, a whole, a whole lot of stuff is. that's necessarily just just unheroic and, and, and wholly, you know, amoral. No, but he doesn't but, really do anything commendable either. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to the point, I mean, he's, you look at he's the hero in the of the movie, but... They wanted the movies to be action movies, so of course the hero of the, the main character must be the action hero. Yeah, you, you look at him, especially First Contact Nemesis, yeah, he could have been anybody. It makes no sense. But he could have been anybody. He could have, yeah. And so he just becomes this generic captain that we can't really get a grip on, we can't get a handle on his character, even though we've seen him for seven years in the series, because he's just such a completely different character. Um, I, I, th I think that uh, we would be remiss to not uh, bring up generations with this uh, because, and I don't, I don't know if you, if you know the famous story about this, but, uh, but Generations was originally um, pitched to the fans as Kirk versus Picard. Yes. Did you know this? Uh -huh. And there were teaser posters uh -huh. that, that, that had, if I remember correctly, um, there were teaser posters that were like, that were like uh, you know, summer of 1994, uh, uh, Kirk versus Picard. Mm -hmm. You're like, ooh, this is going to be this big, huge thing. Sure. And um, it was as anticlimactic as, as it possibly could well, it just didn't make sense. So. Well, yeah, A, it didn't make sense, and, and B... They got you, no screen time. Yeah, you put you, you you put the two of them in the most dull and really inane situation you could have, I think. Yeah, and for the most part, I think it was still Picard who was fighting Soren, wasn't it? Yeah, for yeah, for the most part, Kirk hardly so, even really needed to be there. Yeah, yeah. it was it, again. It not only was contrived, but they weren't. You know, it, it didn't feel Star Trek. Yeah, what it should have been is. I don't know how you get them together in the same century, but right. you know, they each have their own command, yeah. and they have this common purpose, but whose leadership abilities went out? Yeah, exactly. Is it the soldier, or is it the diplomat? Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of fans um, kind of naively assumed that if it was Kirk versus Picard, they would actually be fighting each other. Which yeah, I don't make see. Much sense, it would have been tough to make that to to, to do it that in a convincing way. Yeah, but maybe if it were some alien who could reach again, uh, you know, across time and space, bring them together, and make them think they were each fighting. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but you, 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 you wouldn't want that again. That's, convoluted. That's, that's far too convoluted. But I, right. uh, but, but yeah, but the but the idea of Kirk versus Picard in that uh, you know we we need the we've got. We've got Kirk and Picard vying for power, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah, that yeah, that, that could have been cool. Uh, and honestly, there was a. I'm getting off topic now, but I'll throw this out there. Um, and I don't usually reference uh, Trek books, but uh, one that I kind of liked, mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, uh, Ship of the Line. I've, I've, I've talked about this mm -hmm. with you before, um, where they took uh, Kelsey Grammer's character, um, Morgan Bateson, yeah. from Cause and Effect, mm -hmm. and uh, they they had it. Now, it, it, canon wise, this actually doesn't make any sense now. But um, but but back then, before we had a whole lot of movie stuff, what what, what they what they said was um, Morgan Bateson got the Enterprise E mm -hmm. uh, for like a year before Picard. Okay. And then Picard comes back, and now it's his ship. And Morgan Bateson is like, that's not fair. It was my ship. And so now they're vying for power. And sure. it was very much Picard versus that Bateson. That actually sounds really. And it was and it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, and I, the writing was was such that somehow or rather you could you could very easily see Kelsey Grammer in this role. Uh -huh. It was really kind of epic, and I don't know, yeah. I really dug it. So I'm just saying that that's the kind of thing I would have liked to have seen. Sure. So uh, so now that we've kind of done the whole Kirk versus Picard bit, um, why would you say is it that that, that argument still, mm -hmm. to this day, uh, kind of, um, you know, you know, continues to stick around and is uh -huh. still a big deal, even after we've had three more series 
and a reboot. Yeah. Well, I think I think there are actually a couple reasons for this. One. Um, I think one of the reasons is that Kirk and Picard were around long enough together by themselves mm -hmm. because you had Kirk for so long, and then Picard was sort of the interloper. So now this new series has come along, this new Trek. So how does and plus it plus his out? show lasted a long time. Yeah, and so his show lasted seven years. And, so and, you and had, was more successful while it was on. Yeah, you had this you had Kirk versus Picard argument for seven years before DS9 even started. Yep. And then you had Well, and during its run, but yeah. Sure. But then but then you had, you know, Cisco and Janeway and Ar and then Archer mm -hmm. and the captains just kind of got progressively less noticed in the in the public's mind where most people knew about Next Generation because that was kind of big. Mm -hmm. But then, how many people watch DS9 or actually stopped watching DS9 because it wasn't really the Next Generation Star Trek they knew? Yeah, and I like an argument that you made before we started recording, mm -hmm. uh, where you said that you said that Kirk and Picard are two very different people, mm -hmm. and they're nearly Polar famous opposite, really. archetypes. Yeah. Whereas. Afterwards, the captains get almost more generic. Kind of. I mean, that's not entirely fair. Um, no. I mean, I love Cisco. I, to a point, love Janeway when she's written correctly. And but you Archer the is Archer. But you get the literary face-off of yes. the soldier versus the diplomat. That's it. Yeah. And, and then when you get past that, it either gets more complicated with Cisco or it gets less complicated. Right. If that makes any Where sense. I don't know. You just, there's really not a, a title, a name, that you could give to each of the other captains mm -hmm. that's just... That, that grand, that literary, I suppose. Well, and also I don't think that they had the um, the, uh, social, the social and cultural impact that both Picard and Kirk had. <laughs> um, but you will see Picard and Kirk both pop up on, on cultural icon lists, mm -hmm. on American pop icon lists, sure. both of them. Uh, and I, and I've, see, I've seen it. I've seen lists of 100 and seen them both placed in various places. Yeah. Um, the other three are in some ways too new. Mm -hmm. And I think also part of the problem is just it's Star Trek. It's been around long enough that once you start doing um, uh, spin-offs, these characters, these newer characters, are going to be um, less and less important. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say, but that's not to say that they're not important in their own right. Some of them, although I, 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 I would, I would say that Archer is not. Uh, but, but, um, but then, and the irritating thing with Janeway is that she often gets, uh, she, she often uh, gets pointed to as. Uh, you know, being like this really great voice for feminism, which I never understood. Yeah. And I think that's just there because she's a female captain, so naturally she must be a feminist. Yeah. And that I've never really made, sense to me. made any sense to me. But um, but yeah. But then but then Cisco um is uh, is very different from from Kirk and Picard, yes. and I think almost deserves a title on his own because almost. But it's just sort of a I don't know if you can really put a name to it because he's just quick to react. He's He was the perfect leader for the Dominion War. But the one thing but, that they never dealt with, at least very much, with mm -hmm. Picard and Kirk is is, uh, is the religious side. Mm -hmm. And he had that with Sisko. And so Sisko is not only a captain, but he's also a religious icon. And um, I'm not going to say that that's like a, a big, you know, cultural... Uh, like like phenomenon type thing, uh -huh. like like it is like like it's not a big archetype, mm -hmm. but it was a void that needed to be filled in, yeah. in Star Trek. Um, you, you look at Kirk and Picard, and anytime the, the the religious question would ever would ever come up, mm -hmm. um, they, they would always sideswipe it. Always, <laughs> both Picard. of them. Yeah. Well, I don't mean that. I mean just anytime somebody would ask them what their religious views are, oh, yeah. and they would just be kind of like, "Well, I believe they're." something. And then that's usually what you got. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was interesting because, I mean, you know, they are flying around around space and finding all kinds of people that naively believe in religions that are very obviously, when you step back, not real. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. And they see all these fantastic things that they can scientifically point to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it would be difficult yeah. to be religious in this universe. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I always I always dug the Bajorans. So, well, I actually don't like the Bajorans that much, but it was the reason that I dug the idea of yeah. the of the um, the prophets. Right, definitely. But anyway, I'm sorry that we just <laughs> ran way off way off topic there. Anyway, um, I think we're probably uh, most of the way out of time. But um, I don't know. So, Kirk and Picard are both Toss like up. this for you. Exactly. Yeah. What can I say?
Well, thanks a lot for watching Ask the Trexperts. Uh, and tell us, are you uh, a bigger fan of Kirk or Picard? And, uh, you know, leave that in the comments. And also, if there's something you'd like us to talk about in a future video or something you'd like us to review, I think we'll try to do an episode review next time. Uh, we've got a few things good. people have been asking us to do. And um, leave that in the comments as well. And thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Lloyd. I'm Sarah. We'll see you next time. The best is yet to come.